Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 7 using cameras in ROS. In this uh, chapter we're going to learn about cameras in image processing fundamental and robots. These are very important uh, techniques uh, particularly used in navigation and manipulation. Since we're interested in knowing what's happening with the world, we need to process some of that image information in order to navigate or manipulate. In this uh, lecture, you're going to learn basic conventions for camera coordinate frames and ROS, and then how to do intrinsic calibration with one and two cameras through OpenCV, and finally, some low-level image processing operations uh, with OpenCV. Now, this lesson assumes some background knowledge. So, I have included some references in your reference folder that will help you uh, learn more about uh, calibration. So here is the first reference. Uh, it gives you an introduction to the pinhole camera. Six pages long, just something basic you can read. The second reference is much longer, 55 pages. It's an in-depth, sorry. It's an in-depth uh, tutorial and implementation of a camera calibration algorithm. You don't have to really understand all of it or go through it, but it's uh, there available for you in case you're interested. There's also the ROS tutorial on monocular camera intrinsic calibration at this link, which will be useful to you uh, also to review. So in section 6.1, we're going to study something called projective transformation into camera coordinates. We're going to be looking at just how to set up the problem of calibration. Uh, some things to know. When a camera is used, there's going to be distortion because of where, the fact that we're using lens. Um, so this distortion makes straight lines look into round lines. So we want to eliminate that. And also we need to know that uh, we, we want the correct mapping between pixels and spatial coordinates, XYZ coordinates. Given that every camera is slightly different, Maybe the sensor array uh, has a slightly different focal point, or it's not, slight, not centered exactly the same way as every other camera. We need to figure out those parameters to be able to do that transformation between pixels and spatial coordinates, or the other way around. In, in the problem of camera calibration, we have two parts. Here in the lesson, we're going to look at intrinsic calibration. And so learn how to find those lens parameters but as for homework, we're also going to be interested in, in extrinsic calibration, which is really the problem of finding out a transformation from the robot base to the camera link. Now let's look at uh, those two a little bit more in detail. In the intrinsic calibration, we're going to first find what we call the intrinsic parameters, and secondly, we're going to find the distortion parameters. Note that these properties don't change even if we move the camera, or we mount it in different locations. In the intrinsic parameter, uh, we will know the image sensor dimensions. That's the number of pixels uh, per row and columns. Um, we will know also their width and their height, which may not necessarily be equal. And we use that information then to find other things like, what's the central pixel of the image plane? Um, they're not all going to be the same. And we also want to find the focal point, which is a distance from, say, the pinhole in a camera um, to the image plane. For the distortion coefficients, we're going to find some coefficients, some kind of values that uh, will determine how distortion takes place. For extrinsic uh, calibration, um, I, I want to introduce it to you right here. We want to compute the transform between the camera frame and the robot target frame. Now, in this case, in this image, the robot target frame is going to be the robot base. This is the uh, human robot Baxter, and so the base of that robot is right here. Think about how do you find that distance from, from the base, from the zero, zero point of the robot uh, to the camera? It's not something you can measure with a ruler, right? So. Basically, uh, you need to work through these two other coordinates, or transformations, I apologize, to find this one. How do we do that? 
So the first one is going to be from the camera base all the way to, say, the contact point, which would be right here in the middle of the two fingers. That's where uh, basically you would find the pose of any object that the the origin of the pose of any object that you would grab. And this transformation would follow the forward kinematics of the robot. The second transformation that you can get is uh, from the uh, camera link or camera link frame uh, just to to the contact point or where the object is, right? And then and then you can do this through image processing, QR codes. That's something you'll do in your homework. So once you have that, then you can discover the transformation between the camera link and the robot base. Note that before doing extrinsic cal calibration, we always need to do intrinsic calibration first. So let's introduce the problem. Number one, we're going to have a pinhole camera, which is an ideal model of a camera. The pinhole would be located right here at this capital letter C, um, uh, which we're going to be calling the projection center. That's going to be the origin of the camera frame. And, and so anytime that we have an external object that we're going to call M over here at some XYZ position, um, that's uh, where the, the whole of the camera would be located. Now, every camera has a different focal length. And so whatever that focal length uh, will be, we'll assume that the, we have something called the image plane, showed in light blue colors right here. We'll put that image plane there. Now we need some coordinate axes, so for the projection center um, we'll have an X, Y, and Z axis, and they're going to be arranged as follows. The X axis should be parallel to the X axis of the image plane. Now the X axis of the image plane is going to be defined by U, where the origin of this image plane starts at the top left corner, 0, 0. The Y axis of, the, of, the, of this uh, frame, the metric system here, is parallel to the v-axis of the image sensor plane. Okay, and then the z-axis ideally will be perpendicular um, to the image sensor plane, and we call that the optical axis. One, a few things that we're interested in computing is the center point of that image sensor array which we call little c. And so the coordinates of that would be uc for the middle of the columns and uv for the middle of the rows, where u goes from 0 to n columns minus 1, and v goes from 0 to n rows minus 1, and where each pixel in that sensor array has a known height and a known width. The sensor array also will have a number of pixels that provide us with red, green, blue, or RGB intensities. And where the focal length can be de uh, defined by this vector, uh, CC, big C to little c. And then the problem is finding the mapping from 3D coordinates to 2D coordinates. Okay, so here we have the same image, but slightly different view. And we can draw some relationships uh, here using similar triangles. The focal length is to z, what x is to u, and what y is to v. And by doing that, we can solve for u and v in the following way. u equals f big x over z, and v equals Fy over z. So you can see that now we have a uh, 2D image plane representation in terms of these metric coordinates. Now these two letters uh, can be introduced into a homogeneous matrix um, using the following format. Look at the notes for a more reference. And so here we have this problem of going from xy to uv and uh, this little u and this little v uh, can be thought of little x or little y. And the focal length, furthermore, can be projected into an fx part and an fy part. To do that, we need to divide the focal length by the uh, width of a pixel 
or by the height of a pixel. So once we do this, um, finding the U coordinate and the V coordinate of an image on the sensor array is the problem of computing the you see the center of the image plus some offset which is going to be given by whatever this metric uh, distance is divided by the width of a pixel so this will give us the offset in the image plane uh, to get u and correspondingly to do v so if we have fx fy uh, uc and uv we have everything that we need to go from 3D to 2D. And so these are what are known the parameters and the intrinsic calibration matrix K. Again, look at the references for more details on the matrix, but it's also what the ROS system will be returning to us. And, and then we can do the projection from the world uh, to the image plane. For lens distortion, uh, we need to know that the lens affect the projection of ob objects onto that image plane due to light reflections like this. You might have an image and then once it goes through the lens you end up getting something that looks like this. Not just distorted. And in more detail we have different kinds of distortion like this would be a barrel distortion and this is a pink cushion distortion. So what actually is going to happen at the end, we're going to have a radial distortion model. That is, distortion is going to happen based on the radial distance from the center of the image. And so we have x and y coordinates. Um, and uh, along with that, we're going to have k coefficients and a polynomial equation. So this equation is going to be a function of r, r squared, r to the power of 4, r to the power of 6, and each of those will have a coefficient. And really what we're looking then at is how do we go from the object coordinates to the principal plane or to the image plane with no distortion, um, and then including the distortion, and then finally to the pixel coordinates. Okay, so here um, for this normal principal plane coordinates, we can think of x prime and y prime as uh, this x over f and y over f coordinates. And then to get x double prime with the distortion and y double prime, we see that this x coordinate is modified by this polynomial equation right here on the numerator and the denominator. Now this r to the 6 uh, will make the contribution of k3 and k6 really, really small to the point that they're negligible. So mostly we'll be concerned with these parameters, k1, k2, k4, k5. We'll see how that looks in ROS a little bit later, and we'll have the same thing for y double prime. And, and so we'll have the discovery of these coefficients and some projection parameters for the distortion model.